Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today we're getting back on the Jeep M677 quad cab build. We have a lot done here. We've got it married up to the chassis. We have to do the uh, finished details and then get into making the trailer. All right, so let's get started. I'm picking back up where I left off, on the main body. Most of the rough end work is complete, I just need to add in the details. Things like ribbing in the bed are better done with vacuum forming, but if not, you can add in small styrene strips to represent the same thing. The next thing to focus on is covering up the shocks, instead of using a cantilever shocks or trying to go with really short ones. I just covered up the holes with boxes. The passenger side gets a storage box. It is supposed to be the type where the drawer slides out. It's just simply a styrene box which is then bolted in the bed. After that, I start working on mounting the body to the chassis. The rear is simple, but for the front, I had to make a small support on each side. The boxes were made so they would make contact with the skid plate. It just needs a little Velcro to keep it in place.
The rear has a plastic plate attached to the chassis. This aligns with the bed. Again, I added some Velcro on each side. To make sure the alignment is correct from side to side and front to back, a long screw was used. I screwed it in the bed and put a corresponding hole in the plate. This way the body will slot into the same place every time. The other side of the bed is covered up with a 3D printed cooler. When I printed it, I made it hollow with the bottom open. When viewed from the top, you can't even tell there's a hole in the bed. The last thing to cover up is the transmission. The way the chassis fell with the body it was split between the cab and the bed. The cab side gets covered up with the rear seat and the bed with a 3D printed case I designed in Fusion 360. This was molded after an aluminum box commonly used in overlanding rigs. The front seats get installed next. I had to do a little more trimming to get them to fit, but once in place, you can't see the cuts at all. With the final pieces in place on the body, I started planning out the trailer. I pulled a trailer I recently finished off the shelf for some inspiration. This trailer will share the same axles and leaf springs, but the body will be different. For the existing trailer, I used the rear of a Jeep body. The trailer for the Jeep M677 will be made to look like a military trailer. Most of the other trailers I've made have been built from scratch. I really wanted to try making one from vacuum form molds. I started this process by adding styrene to pieces of MDF. After cutting in slots and removing key areas, they are glued to the wood.
The front and back are the same dimension, so just one mold was needed. I can simply make two vacuum pulls to get the front and back. The side is also a mirror copy. Since I decided to cut away the wheel well later, I can do the same to make a driver's and passenger side with just one mold. The floor is simply a piece of MDF with several strips of styrene glued in place. The entire trailer is made of just three molds. After the pieces are vacuum pulled, they are cleaned up and then solvent glued together. I wanted to use some half inch square tubing for the chassis. I found that a metal cutting blade in my jigsaw makes quick work of splitting the piece. After a few passes with a flap wheel on my angle grinder, they're ready to be cut into shape. I start with just a simple rectangular frame, which is silver soldered together. The fenders are cut out and glued in place after the trailer is glued together. For the molds, I turn to 3D printing. I'm figuring out which molds to make with which process the more I do this. My first attempt was to vacuum form them together, but later I decided to try them with them separate. They turned out a little bit better in the second pull. The rectangular frame was designed so the leaf springs could be mounted directly to it without any spacers. I am using extra speed leaf springs. These are close copies of RC four wheel drive springs, but they are not exactly the same. One difference is they do not come with the shoulder bolts. The shoulder bolts are what is used to allow the leaf spring to pivot. To get around this, I insert a small standoff into the eye of the leaf. It just takes a small tweak with a pair of pliers to open it up enough to insert the standoffs. This allows me to use an M3 screw 
and not have a lot of slop in the leaf spring. The axles, which are used in 114th semi trucks, are then bolted to the leaf springs. The fenders were cleaned up a bit and then sanded straight before gluing into place on the sides of the trailer. Since each side is symmetrical, you can choose wherever you want the fender to land. I'm not sure what they are in real life, but there are flanges before and after the fenders. I designed a piece in Fusion 360 and printed a few on my resin printer. In order to get some places to mount the trailer down to the chassis, Scale Metal Supplies triangles were brazed into place. These offer several holes which can be used to run an M3 screw through. The customer didn't ask for one, but I decided to throw in a rear bumper. I had made a temporary bumper for my VW thing before replacing it with one I designed and had Scale Metal Supplies cut out. I just ground back the paint and brazed in a section of tube to hold her trailer hitch. The trailer was blown apart and each piece sprayed with black spray paint after getting sanded and primed. The 3D printed cargo box is mounted to the front of the trailer. I left the bottom off and the box hollow to save some weight. I designed some taillights for the rear. The housing is printed in gray while the lens is clear. The housing is mounted to a metal bracket and it's just a simple angle piece. The screw goes into the back with some M2 screws and nuts to go through the body. I had almost forgotten about making fender flares for the front. They're not a very big, but pretty crucial to the look. I was able to design these in Fusion 360 and print them in resin. This piece was mounted to some MDF to give it some structural support. All of this then gets vacuum formed with styrene before attaching to the body. The last thing before filling in scratches is to cut door panel gaps with a Tamiya scribe tool.
As mentioned, the body has several scratches and imperfections, which get filled in with Tamiya putty. The larger holes and gaps should be filled in by now. This is just the final imperfections, which show up after sanding back a primer a bit. The truck has really turned into a big project. I can't wait to see what the customer does with this. I have a little sneak peek, but I can't spill the beans. Lots of fun things coming up, including warmer weather. Very soon, it will be warm enough for me to actually see you on the rocks.